Assalamu alaikum. Dear learners, I hope you are fine and have watched the previous videos in which we learned how to design planar robotic manipulator, non planar robotic manipulator, perform forward kinematics and inverse kinematics, generate a trajectory for our robot to track, and calculating and using Jacobian of our robot. Well, up to this point, things were quite simple, even mathematically. However, from this point onwards, things are going to get serious and require a little bit deep knowledge of physics, control systems, real-life actuators, and robots. But this doesn't mean that it'll be difficult. That's where I come in. I'll try to simplify these complex things up to a point that every one of you can easily use the required things and simulate or even drive your robotic manipulator in hardware with ease. So follow the video carefully and if you couldn't grasp anything, rewind and watch again. Moreover, you're always welcome to contact me through our YouTube channel, which I hope you have liked and subscribed by now, or through our email address. So let's start the discussion on the topic of the video, that is robot dynamics. Dynamics of majority of the systems are governed by the laws of motion that were introduced by Newton's and most of us have used these laws in high school and college. Limiting our focus to robot dynamics only, the second law of motion is all that we need. It states that the force applied on the body of mass m will make the body move with an acceleration a. And these quantities are related by the famous Newton's second law of motion equation as shown over here. But let me tell you that this equation is seriously simplified because in reality, the applied force is not just being used for imparting acceleration in the body, but it is being consumed in a number of other things as well. So cutting things short, for robotic manipulators, this force is being consumed in primarily three things. First, to impart acceleration to the robotic links. Second, to overcome the Coriolis centripetal and centrifugal forces. And third, to overcome the gravitational forces acting on the robot. Therefore, the general equation of motion for any robotic manipulator may be written in this form, where this term is nothing but mass into acceleration, that is force being consumed to produce acceleration. This term lumps up the forces required to overcome Coriolis centripetal and centrifugal effects on the robot. And the last term gives the forces required to overcome the gravitational pull. For an end joint robotic manipulator, this equation will consist of n coupled nonlinear second order differential equations. Worried? Well, this is where robotic system toolbox of MATLAB will come in handy. We are going to see how we can figure out all the things needed in these n coupled nonlinear second order differential equations and solve them to get robot moving as per the applied force or torque. So let me quickly give you an overall idea that what robot dynamics is all about and why do we need it. We want the robot to follow a given trajectory, but we know that in real life motors or actuators require current, which is analogous to torque, to produce motion. That is why we have motion controllers that will take trajectory from you, convert that trajectory into torque commands and somehow provide the motors with corresponding currents so that our robot may move on the desired trajectory. This scheme is well and good for the applications that are concerned with position of the robot only. But if you want your robot to interact with the environment and exert control forces on it, then you need to track the torque profile instead of the position trajectory. At this point, robot dynamics are used. You'll generate the trajectory in the same old way, but using the inverse dynamics equation convert that trajectory into required torques and then feed those torques to your robot. And on the other side, by taking a feedback of torques being applied by the robot, you can use the forward dynamics equation to get the trajectory on which the robot is moving. All of this looks quite simple, but believe me, it's not. Because modeling a physical system through such equations of motion is not only difficult, but also impossible. Because no matter how many things you incorporate into these equations, some things will be left out and you won't get the mathematical model of the exact same thing which you have in the real life. So in the ideal case, this will happen that whatever trajectory you are providing to the inverse dynamics block, 
will be used to generate the required torques and if those required torques are provided to the forward dynamics block or the physical robot then you'll get back the trajectory with which you started so this is what we are going to implement today on matlab using robotic system toolbox and simscape toolbox we will see that the torques generated by the inverse dynamics block when fed to the forward dynamics block will produce the same trajectory as we desired but when the same torque is provided to the physical system robotic manipulator modeled in simscape multi body toolbox the robot will not produce the desired trajectory this is because of the fact that the model used by both toolboxes is the same but in physical system there are some unmodeled disturbances and things which the robotic system toolbox never knows of and hence the torque generated by robotic system toolboxes in worst dynamics block is not exactly what is required for moving the simscape robot on the desired trajectory at this point we would need a control system that can produce the required torques to make the robot move on the desired trajectory but that would be a topic of a different video so let's move to the matlab simulink environment and implement all these things which we have just discussed so here is the simulink environment in which we are going to work the very first thing we need is we need to generate a trajectory so i need a trajectory generator block if you have watched the previous videos on trajectory generation then you must know that how to generate a trajectory so i would be skipping the details and i won't be talking that how we are going to generate those trajectory so this block is going to generate the trajectory that i am going to feed to my robot and i want my robot to move on this trajectory i have already configured this block so if you don't know that what this block is then you better watch my previous video on trajectory generation i have explained this block in detail over there so the next thing after trajectory generation is the inverse dynamics block and that block will come from robotic system toolbox manipulator algorithms so if you go into this section you can see inverse dynamics and forward dynamics block over here so here is the forward dynamics block and over here is the inverse dynamics block so first of all i'm going to use the inverse dynamics block i'm going to drag it over here and place it on this model so this inverse dynamics block requires four inputs that is the configuration the joint velocities joint accelerations and external forces acting on the robot for the time being we are not concerned about any external forces so we are going to provide zeros over here but for the configuration joint velocity and joint acceleration we need these things now to cut the things short i have generated the trajectory that is directly in joint space i am not producing a workspace trajectory because for workspace trajectory i have to use inverse kinematics to produce the joint space trajectory so this is the configuration which i want this one is the joint velocity and this output will be the joint acceleration so i am directly going to provide these things to this block and for the external forces i am going to use a constant and that constant will be a zero of 6 by 4 dimension because the external forces are going to act on all bodies and for a three joint manipulator which i am later on going to use there are going to be four bodies and the forces and torques which are acting on those four bodies can have x y z directions and wrenches about x y and z axis so all these things all these external forces are going to be zero so that's why i need a 6 by 4 matrix of zeros So now this inverse dynamics block is going to generate torques but before using it i need to provide the rigid body tree of my robot i have designed a 3d non planar manipulator with three revolute joints in the previous video so i am going to use that robotic manipulator over here so for that i am going to provide the rigid body tree of that robotic manipulator i have already loaded that thing into my workspace so i am just going to use it If you don't know that from where this robotic manipulator comes then once again you better watch the previous video in which I showed you how to design a 3D non planar robotic manipulator and load it into the workspace so that you can use it with the robotic system toolbox so that's it now this block is going to generate that joint torques that are required by the robotic manipulator to move on the desired trajectory now we can provide these torques 
to the forward dynamics block or to the original robot or the physical system robot and see that how those things are moving. So if we provide these talks to the forward dynamics block, which is over here, we will see that the forward dynamics block is exactly the opposite of this inverse dynamics block. So, so whatever trajectory we are providing over here, we are going to get that trajectory out over here. So we are going to just provide this torque over here and this forward dynamics block required three other things. One is the same as this external forces. So once again, I'm going to connect it over here. There are no external forces for the time being and it requires the configuration which is coming from here and it requires the joint velocity as well which is coming from here. So that's it. Now this forward block is going to generate the joint accelerations. These joint accelerations may be integrated to get the joint velocities and then the joint angles. So I'm going to use integrated twice. So over here, I will be getting the joint positions. Now on the other side, I can provide this torque to my physical system robot as well and see that whether this torque is enough for my robot to follow the desired trajectory. So for that, I need a physical system of robot. And once again, if you have watched the previous video, I have already generated that robot whose rigid body tree I have provided to this inverse dynamics block and to this forward dynamics block. Oh, sorry, I haven't provided the uh, rigid body tree to this forward dynamics block. So double click on it and provide the rigid body tree of my robot to this as well. So using what we have developed in the previous video, I'm just going to place my ro physical system robot over here. So this was the robot that we designed in the previous video. It had three joints, three revolute joints and an end effector as well. And there were four links. That is the base, the link one, link two and link three. So the very first thing we need is we need to make sure that this robot is actuated through torques not motion this time because we are going to provide torques to the joints. So for that you have to go inside this joint and in the actuation section select provided by input for the torque and for motion you can leave it to automatically computed. And on the other side for sensing we are going to sense the position so that we can compare that position with what we are providing that whether our robot is moving on the provided positions or not. We are going to do the same thing for other joints as well. And now we have to provide Simulink signal to these joints. So for that, we need a Simulink to physical converter. And inside this converter, we need to make sure that we are providing Newton meters, that is the units for torque. Now this time, we won't be needing the derivatives because we are directly providing torques. Okay, so I would be needing three of these because I have three joints. I'm going to connect these converters to my joints. And on the output side, I need a physical system to Simulink converter so that I can take the signal from the joints to my Simulink. And I need once again, three of them. I'm going to connect the sensed positions to these converters so that I can get the sensed position out in the Simulink environment. Uh, so I guess that's it. Now I can enclose this whole robot into one subsystem. And I can label this first input as torque one, that is the torque for joint number one, second as torque two, and third as torque three. And on the output side, I'm going to get Q1 measured, that is the joint one measured, and Q2 measured, and then Q3 measured. I'm going to name this subsystem as robot because this is my physical robot. So that's it. Now, using a DMUX, I can DMUX the torques which are coming from the inverse dynamics block and provide these torques to my physical robot. So here are the torques and these three talks are being provided to my physical robot. On the other side, I'm measuring these three joint angles and I can mux them together so that I can provide these 
joint angles to the scope for comparison with the desired trajectory and with the positions which are being generated by the forward dynamics block. So now all I need is a scope and this scope will be used to compare all the things. I have one reference trajectory, one trajectory that is being generated by the forward dynamics block and one trajectory is being generated or is being sensed from the Simscape robot model. I need three inputs and I'm going to use this layout. So the first input would be the trajectory or the joint configuration which I am providing as a reference. The second one is being generated from the forward dynamics block and the last one is being generated from a physical system robot. Now if whatever model is being used in this block that is a forward dynamics block is exactly the opposite of whatever model is being used in inverse dynamics then I should be getting this desired configuration at the output. So first two graphs should be similar and similarly if this physical model is exactly what is being represented by this inverse dynamics plot then whatever torque is required for this model to move this model should move on the desired trajectory using the provided torque and this last graph should also be similar to the upper two graphs but we are going to see that because of some unmodeled disturbances and certain things this robot in physical system is not going to move as desired so just to clarify things I'm going to encapsulate these areas and label them as a robotic system toolbox because in this area everything is coming from robotic system toolbox whereas this lower portion it is coming from simscape toolbox simscape or physical toolbox so that's everything now let's run this simulation and see that what happens i'm going to run this simulation for two seconds only because the trajectory which i am providing is of two seconds only as the calculation of inverse dynamics and forward dynamics is uh, a bit difficult so it is going to take some time for the simulation to complete now you can see that what happened over here the robot moved haphazardly now should it be moving in this fashion now let's check that what was our desired trajectory and how it moved so for desired trajectory I'm going to open this graph so over here we can see that the first graph is what we desired these are the joint angles on which we wanted our robot to move the second graph over here is what the forward dynamics block generated that is we provided the torques produced by the inverse dynamics block to the forward dynamics block and it generated these trajectories you can see that these two trajectories are exactly the same whereas the last one is the trajectory followed by the physical system robot and it is quite clear that robot was not moving on our desired trajectory now this is because of the fact that the robot modeled in robotic system toolbox is not same as what is being modeled in the simscape multibody toolbox there is some discrepancy between these two models that is the model used by the robotic system toolbox and the model used by the simscape toolbox this discrepancy can never be covered because there are always some unmodeled disturbances and things that cannot be included in the robots in the robots dynamic equation of motion so here comes the need for a controller a controller will be taking trajectory from the trajectory generator block will be using the dynamics of the robot and somehow will generate the required torques that will make this robot move on the desired trajectory now there are a number of controllers that can achieve this task but i'll be discussing few of them but that too in some other video so dear learners i hope you have understood how you can implement robot dynamics and you have understood that what robot dynamics are and why do we need it in the next video i'm going to implement a controller that will make the physical systems robot or the physical robot follow the same trajectory as we desire so till then take care and goodbye